Brothers and sisters, let me begin this homily with my personal story. It was a nice November day, 1995. I was having breakfast with my friends in the seminary. Suddenly, I experienced this dyspnea, which is shortness of breath. Straight away, I knew that it was something serious. I was feeling dizzy and I couldn't sleep on my back for the next couple of days. An x-ray showed that I had a collapsed lung. As a result, I spent a few weeks in two different hospitals. A special tube was inserted into my chest to remove excess air. I must admit it wasn't a pleasant feeling. In fact, it was a very painful experience. However, I saw my suffering as a time of grace. I remember I was looking at the crucifix hanging about the door of my room and telling Jesus that I wanted to be in union with his suffering for the salvation of the world. I also offered my physical pain for some people I knew who were in need of spiritual support. It was fascinating to witness the great care of nurses and doctors. I could see how committed they were. It was almost like the patients created an opportunity for them to show us their loving care. In the time of COVID-19, the media highlight the great dedication of hospital staff who are looking after people with the virus. When we read the Gospels, we see that the mystery of Jesus was similar to those working in the hospitals today. Confronting the people who suffered from different kinds of diseases, he had an opportunity to reveal to them who he really was, a loving and caring Savior of the world. Through his healing ministry, he showed his compassion towards the sick. In today's Gospel, we see yet another example of Jesus' care. Simon Peter's mother-in-law was in bed with a terrible fever. Jesus reached out to her and cured her illness. Dear friends, no matter what we are going through in our lives, no matter how difficult our present situation might be, no matter how much we suffer, Jesus is faithfully there for us. He is ready to embrace us with his loving and caring arms. He wants us to open our ears and hear his whispering words. I love you and I care for you. Do not give up. When we experience different kinds of illnesses, trauma and pain, we have to remember that we are not alone. In his letter to the Romans, St. Paul reminds us that nothing in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Sometimes it happens that people lose their faith encountering great physical pain. I remember a middle-aged mother who lost her faith in God when she discovered that she had a few months to live because of cancer. All her life's projects were cancelled. She lost most of her friends overnight. She had a really hard time before she passed away. Today's first reading gives us an example of a good and holy man called Job who found himself in a difficult situation because he lost everything as well. However, he continued to be faithful to God. He knew that God was with him even though his pain was difficult to accept. Theologians say that Job was an Old Testament type of the New Testament Jesus. The Lord's suffering wasn't easy for him either. We remember his words from the Garden of Gethsemane, Father, take this cup from me. But straight away he added, but your will be done, not mine. Jesus trusted his Father totally. Brothers and sisters, I invite you to think for a moment about the pain you feel these days. 
Please make a decision to be similar to Job in his approach to suffering and repeat his words often. Blessed be the name of the Lord, no matter how much you suffer. Let us take to the heart St. Paul's words. I rejoice now in the sufferings I bear for your sake. And what is lacking of the sufferings of Christ, I fill up in my flesh for his body, which is the Church. We know that nothing was lacking in the Lord's redemptive passion and death on the cross. However, if we are heroic enough to rejoice in our sufferings, accepting them in union with Christ, then they become a part of the redemptive work of the Lord. So, our sufferings have potentially a great value if we live them well. Let us ask God to help us to imitate his son Jesus, who was always full of love and compassion towards ill people. May we be able to offer them our care, our understanding and our Christian love, assuring them about the eternal merit of their sufferings.